everyone. I'm Alexis Cantor, and I am from Target, and I am, uh, have the privilege of being in our product design and development team. And I'm here representing um, Sandy Gagnon, who's in the audience right up front. Um, and she leads an amazing 3D virtualization team that is driving incredible innovation at Target. And we're excited to be here with these amazing panelists and talking about our journey. So here we go. So for those not familiar with Target, um, who are we? We're about 1,800 stores. We have over 340,000 team members. Um, last year, our uh, sales were just under 74 billion. And uh, something that we're incredibly proud of at Target is our um, history of giving over uh, $4 million a week in charitable giving. And when you think about what makes Target uniquely Target, it is that um, legacy of giving, it's our drive for innovation, and just a real feeling of design for all. And when we think about design for all and we um, think about who Target really is, these are just a few things that we're incredibly proud of because innovation doesn't happen without diversity. And so we need uh, diverse perspectives um, in our team, in the companies we work with, and we need to be relevant in the communities we serve because we take that really seriously. And that comes to you know, how many people we fit um, and how comfortable people feel in our stores. We've been on a 3D journey, and it's interesting listening to the other panelists because it's a little bit of a pivot here. Um, we love 3D body scanning, and we use it, but we're going to take you on our journey for 3D virtualization of garments. Um, Sandy and I joked for a very long time that we had more passion um, than belief in this from our company, but uh, we kind of live this, uh, this saying every day, the day before something is a breakthrough, it's a crazy idea. Um, and we are huge believers that 3D virtualization of garments, body scanning, standards development, it is the great enabler of speed um, and innovation. Okay, so to talk a little bit about why we see um, this is really, really critical to our future and the benefits to business, um, we're able to um, develop product faster, smarter, uh, with more relevance to the bodies um, of our guests. So I'm going to take you through, um, I think it's six different um, stages of uh, where we use it today. So we start right from our prototyping, and I think initially we thought that it was going to save us time and money, and it did. We've cut down about 65% of our sampling. But what it did, what we didn't play up enough was how it will actually allow you to iterate a lot. There's so much more R&D we can do, um, which gives designers lots of options, gives our guests a lot of things to give feedback on, um, and we can drive innovation faster. Uh, product presentation. So at Target, we present uh, garments in all kinds of ways. If it's on a table, if it's hanging, if it's folded, um, we can now take all of our garments and virtually create them any way anyone needs to see them. And it's amazing. If you build it, they certainly come. Because as soon as our cross-functional partners, either merchants or sourcing, or our presentation, as soon as they started seeing the assets, because it really is all about that asset utilization from prototype through an entire enterprise use. Um, but as soon as people started seeing it, we can use it for every part of our organization. To build off of the, the product presentation, we have visual presentation. And we have a lot of people. Target is a big machine. And there's a lot of people doing different parts. And we have a whole presentation team dedicated to making sure that our stores look a certain way. And through the use of 3D assets, we can actually give them data sooner, better. It's, it's more accurate. Stores can do their work faster, and again, it all goes back to how are we saving time, making smarter decisions, giving people better tools, because ultimately we're there to help the guests. Um, packaging is another thing. So again, you can just see, right, we're trying to make this full suite of uh, 3D assets available to our enterprise. So in packaging, and I love this story because I think it's so often we were making bad decisions because of timing um, of real samples. And so in sleepwear, uh, fourth quarter is a big deal for sleepwear sets. It's a, it's a holiday uh, gift giver. And we used to um, have to make decisions on our print and pattern and our styles well before we would ever actually need to do it for manufacturing. But we had to do it because photographs had to be taken in marketing. 
we have bypassed that entire thing. We no longer do marketing photography for this packaging. It is all done in-house virtually. So again, you can see how through the right use of 3D assets, you can make better and smarter decisions and you're not reliant on old technologies. In-store visualization, so again, we have lots of different prototypes and this allows us to very rapidly um, look at things, make decisions, decide not to do something or decide to do something bigger. And then finally, guest facing. Um, we've done lots of different things with our 3D assets. Some of it has been guest facing where they get to give us feedback. Um, but ultimately, when we think about standards and body scanning and 3D assets, it really is ultimately foundational to drive even more innovation beyond just these six steps. So at, um, at Target, why we believe in 3D, and some of these are, are pretty simple, right? It's sample reduction. We knew, um, we, were, we were talking as panelists that the apparel industry is the number two polluter. And we don't, I can't look at my eight-year-old and think that I've made cute shirts but have killed the environment. So um, we really have to work on a sample reduction. And like I said, this allows us to reduce at least 65% of our samples right now. Again, sustainability then, right? When you think about the environment, all those samples we were making were landing somewhere and most likely in the landfill, and we didn't want that either. Um, smarter des uh, design decisions, so we do a lot of overdevelopment, and that means a lot of work on factories, a lot of shipping, a lot of uh, waste in terms of dyes and materials, and we can uh, see things virtually, make decisions, and then cut. Speed to market, so not only have we been able to reduce our sample, um, how many samples we have, we've been able to take about two weeks out of our development cycle. And then, like I said, um, the true benefit um, is when you think about a 3D asset as a true enterprise tool. So it's not just a product design and development asset where we've created a beautiful garment virtually. It truly flows from us as concept all the way through to in-store for guests. Um, we've been lucky enough to have had many other industries and other companies pay it forward to us. And we just are huge believers that our industry in apparel and accessories and footwear, it must change now too. Um, when we think about uh, the automotive industry, aerospace industry, ac um, architecture, they have been using technologies for so long and it is time for the apparel industry to catch up and use technology for good and scale. Um, and so these are, I love this because these are just, these are all virtual images. Some are ours and some are others and we've noted that, but it, everything is possible. So what the industry gains? Um, some, you know, common things here, right? Faster and smarter decisions, new ways of shopping and improved shopping experience. And we've heard from the other panelists how important that immersive shopping experience is um, and especially to then get the sizing right. Sustainability, again, is cannot be um, said enough, but it goes back to our water and fabric reduction, our time reduction, and, and looking at not just lean manufacturing, but lean design. And again, it, when, if you think about these things, while we may just be starting and we may be on the, the crawl phase, um, it really is to build the foundation for the immersive shopping platform. Uh, it's, we, oh, people always want to jump to the very end and uh, standards aren't sexy, <laughs> but they're absolutely necessary because without that platform uh, and that foundation, you cannot leapfrog and get, um, get to where you want to go aspirationally. Um, so retail's 3D um, future. Um, consumers are redefining and changing the shopping experience. Um, it, brick and mortar is really about how are you gonna be, bring people in and show them the experience, have them try things on or, or use 3D in new and in, um, innovative ways. Um, our industry needs to challenge each other to embrace technology and tell a new story for good. We take it really seriously at Target that we have to use our scale for good and if we can be a bigger part of this change, we want to be out there doing that. 
Um, and immersive shopping requires foundational digital assets. So we spent a lot of time building up these libraries and these assets so that we are ready to pull the trigger and to do things in a bigger, uh, more robust 3D way. And like we said, standards drive success because there is a real barrier to entry with a lot of this technology. No, no company the size of Target can just throw away all the technolo technology they have of today. It is about how um, a suite of tools connect with each other that doesn't happen today. When you think standards, that is really what is going to be so critical um, because you'll have a set of standards and you'll, uh, different systems will be able to talk to each other in a much better way which will drive greater innovation. Um, so something that we have started at Target and we feel so, so lucky that so many people joined us is we created a 3D uh, retail coalition um, and it's bringing retailers together and we're not asking anyone to give up their secret sauce because we, we think it's pretty important at Target to be differentiated and we want everyone to have their secret sauce. But it really is about driving um, and using our scale for good together. Um, so the focus is on the 3D journey through planning, cultural change, and tools. Uh, technology isn't the problem. There's amazing technology, and there are so many different tools that you can use. The company's culture isn't always ready for the technology changes that we're asking for. Um, so what we're working on is uh, through our core group of retail retailers, we are then um, working on a quarterly basis to do shareouts with academia, software providers, and consultants, as well as working with IEEE. And it's as an inter and we have an interactive relationship with IEEE, and it provides a pipeline for our ongoing resolution of 3D virtualization challenges. Um, so then, when we think about the future. Standards remove friction points, allowing the industry to move a lot faster. Uh, right now, without it, there's a real barrier to entry. If you don't have your fabric virtually uh, developed, then you can't create your 3D asset, and you can't then do additional scanning of other bodies. It's, right, it's the whole ecosystem and how it plays together. Um, there's file formats. I mean, it sounds like such a simple thing to say, but one of the first questions we have when we're working with people is like, well, what's a file? And we realize we can't use it or it doesn't work with another system. And those are some simple things. It sounds simple to me. Some things that we would really like to make sure we could get going. Um, the interoperability and then the quality of the images. We have found that um, it has to be believable because if you want a company to take a big step forward and trust that 3D is everything you say it is, they need to know that the quality of the, the asset is there. Um, standardization allows greater access. Um, tools can be developed once and utilized multiple times. So like we said, if we develop uh, the concept and have the 3D asset, it flows through every single part of Target. That is reduction of work, it's a reduction of time, it is a savings in all kinds of ways. Um, and like we said, once we have that type of standardization, the innovation that we can drive, because we're not working on that piece, is so much more. Um, and like we said, ultimately, the imagery drives acceptance through believability. Uh, we're always surprised that we have uh, merchants at work who will you know, buy online for themselves, but be really hesitant when they're looking at a 3D body scan or a 3D virtual asset. So we have to make sure that what we're giving them is credible, it drapes right, it fits right, um, and it's a thing of beauty because ultimately apparel still is a little emotional. So thank you for listening to our journey. Panasonic.